The relationship between the gods and the mortals has hit a little bit of friction in Dragon Ball recently as against his better judgment. Maris has begun to take steps that look to end in him breaking their angel code, causing not only Whis, but the Grand Priest to get involved as well as Whis is sent to go extract the angel trainee from Universe 7. If that wasn't bad enough, now is the time that Moro has chosen to descend upon the earth so it looks like it's all up to just Goku and Vegeta this time as the only ones who even have a chance of standing up to him. But the issues in the main timeline while still looking quite bleak considering Moro hasn't even begun to get serious yet, the dilemma in our story today makes Moro look like child's play. By now we all know of the original 18 universes that made up the multiverse until ultimately certain events led to Zeno erasing 6 of them to never be brought back again. But by a once in a millennia slip up by the Omni King, not everything was necessarily erased. The remaining 12 universes continue to be governed by their respective destroyer gods and angels who along with the Supreme Kais oversee all creation and destruction in their realms. Outside of the 12 universes that remain in current existence by the will of Zeno, anything else would be considered blasphemous but yet, here he is. The angel of the completely erased universe 13 stands today as one of, if not the strongest angels, possibly even troping the grand priest in certain areas with his mysterious unknown techniques and knowledge. How this rogue angel survived judgement from the Omni King himself, we don't know but he has returned and seems increasingly fixated on exacting revenge on his father and Zeno. As fate would have it of course, this angel eventually discovers Goku and Vegeta who helplessly fall before him. Sending Goku to an unknown dimension seemed to be somewhat of a mistake at first but taking refuge here, Goku has met an eerie individual who, when we last left off, has created a physical copy of the angel himself even going as far as to make the clone of equal battle power in order to train Goku but what of Vegeta and the others on earth? Reno has already demonstrated his powers in not only transporting every human being out of West City to an unknown place but also warping one of Vegeta's most powerful attacks, the final flash away like it was nothing while casually spending time on earth awaiting his search party's arrival. Time is running short as next time, the angel says that he'll engage all of the remaining warriors on earth in battle at once but since they have absolutely no means of defeating a god, it's going to take more than Super Saiyan Blue to do this and Vegeta knows that. If you guys want to check out Dragon Ball Super Kai for yourselves the link as always will be down below in the description box so be sure to go check it out if you're interested. Also, if you are enjoying not only the Universe 13 saga but all of the Dragon Ball content we do, maybe consider leaving a like on this video as well and let's try to do 2500 likes, I, I think that's doable. Don't forget to turn that notification bell on down below to never miss an upload and follow me on both Twitch and Twitter to keep up with me and all Dragon Ball related content. But without further ado, West City is gone, Goku is gone, and the Dragon Balls don't even think about it. There are no other options at this point. For a being of this angel's caliber to be defeated by the remaining warriors, they must come together to devise a plan but with the severity of the situation, there's really only one place that they can go now. As we continue on our Universe 13 journey, Vegeta and the others have all gathered on Beerus' planet with no other place that they can go that they'd even be relatively safe from their foe. As they arrive in the God Realm, they're immediately met by Whis who upon seeing them arrive can confirm that his suspicions were true all along. During his search for his delinquent brother, Whis suspected that his next destination may be the Earth but he was unable to make it in time but seeing as how the angel has pretty much just waged war on the Earth for the next time that he arrives, it's a good thing that they did show up here. Everyone from Piccolo to the androids and even Majin Buu have assembled. As the only remaining fighters that they have left, they can't afford to be at any more of a disadvantage than they already are so they've come here. This is no longer an issue that only pertains to the gods themselves. Vegeta declares that they've refused to just stand by and watch this angel destroy everything that they built so everyone here is tagged along because they wish to be trained by Whis as well so they can fight too. Well then. Since this matter no longer involves just the god realm, I suppose it would be my responsibility to help you all as well, a voice suddenly says from behind them as the grand priest suddenly appears on Beerus' planet as well. 
The Grand Prix starts off by saying that he indeed senses a dreadful battle looming in the future and because of this, the Grand Priest has chosen Vegeta. The Prince of Saiyans will now face the father of the angel race in battle to better prepare himself for the upcoming fight even though they know little of what to expect from their opponent. Hmm, a chance to fight the strongest of the angels, the second in command of the multiverse. Sounds like a perfect opportunity for me, now let's see what you can do priest, Vegeta says as the training session of a lifetime is about to commence for Vegeta. But from a far off region in the sky, a small portal appears revealing none other than the mischievous angel himself as he spies on his future opponents unbeknownst to them. Myrtle can't help but be filled with joy as he spectates his plan coming together beautifully and soon, the Grand Priest and Zeno will be dealt with as well. All according to his little game and everybody right now seems to be just a pawn, even the Grand Priest somehow. As we cut back to the conversation with the Earthlings, Master Roshi who has also been assembled has been chosen by Whis to be the leader of this team that will fight against Myrno. Roshi stands shocked that such a decision will be made because he isn't anywhere near as strong as the rest of them, but Whis insists that his knowledge and wisdom far exceeds what he deems necessary right now, and besides, they'll devise a plan that takes advantage of everyone's individual strengths ensuring that they're all useful in this battle even if they aren't as strong as Goku and Vegeta. Now then Vegeta, the Grand Priest says as they continue their conversation before battle, I believe that our opponent has told you that the biggest difference between you and Goku are your battle style and mindset. This is in fact all true and if you can improve these skills then yes, you can defeat your opponent. However, your battle power as it is right now is astronomically below mine and I'm afraid that even at your absolute best, as you are now, you wouldn't even be able to make me flinch. But I am extremely interested in what you can do against me still, Vegeta, he says. Furthermore, he goes on, while I don't possess the same abilities as my son, my battle power still far exceeds his own and as you know, I am known as one of the most powerful fighters in existence, second only to the Omni King himself with powers that have never before been seen by mortals and gods alike. So do your best, Vegeta. While that is a lot easier said than done, Vegeta would never even think of backing down from a challenge, even an impossible one such as this one. He says that if he wants any chance of winning whatsoever, then he has to approach him with the full intent to kill. I'll do everything to make sure I have the edge on you Angel, he says. Be ready. The Grand Prix shows quite a sinister smile at the sound of this as he welcomes Vegeta to try his absolute hardest to kill him. After all. This will be the ultimate test in order to stand any type of chance of defeating Myrno. Vegeta vs the Grand Priest, while obviously a really lopsided affair, seems to be an absolutely necessary step towards defeating their opponent who, while he was watching them, almost looked as if he was expecting this outcome. However, Vegeta looks at this as a means to test his true limits, not having to worry about holding back in the slightest as there's no way he could ever harm the Grand Priest. Right? Vegeta powers up right away to Super Saiyan Blue foregoing all other prior transformations but even so, as the Grand Priest goes on to further comment as well. Very nice Vegeta, you are at maximum power but as I told you, this still won't be enough. In a flash, undetectable by everyone spectating, the Grand Prix zips in front of Vegeta and delivers a vicious punch to the gut stunning him momentarily and then sends him soaring to the ground below with zero effort thus proving the Grand Priest's point. Vegeta knows that he's definitely out of his league in this battle, however it is fortunate for them that the Grand Priest is on their side and it's taken some sort of an interest in Vegeta's strength. Usually the thought of a mortal standing up to a god is blasphemous in itself, but Goku and Vegeta have long shattered that barrier separating the two and even the Grand Priest seems to feel that Vegeta has something in him still that can be brought to the surface skyrocketing him past his lifetime rival Goku if he can obtain such a power in the amount of time that they have left which isn't much. We've seen Grand Priest Goku before as he was trained briefly by the Grand Priest post the tournament of power in Super Dragon Ball Heroes but this seems to be our chance to possibly see a Grand Priest Vegeta as there's no way that tutelage under such an instructor won't lead to an ascension but for now, Vegeta must find a way to break the fourth wall in order to be at least on par with one of the most powerful beings in existence in the upcoming battle where even Ultra Instinct won't be enough. 